this lesson we'll be solving the difference equations where they are repeated roots so let's say we have y subscript n minus 4 subscript y n minus 1 plus 4 y subscript n minus 2 equal to 0 so before you do that what is the order of this difference equation we'll have to take the highest subscript separate the smallest subscript so i'm gonna get n minus n minus 2 which is n minus n plus 2 which is equal to 2. so one thing about the order the order of a difference equation will tell you the number of number of lambda terms which you will get so if i've got an order of two it means my complementary function will have two terms okay and then what is the linearity of this so is the difference equation linear or non-linear so n is the, is the independent variable but y sub n is the dependent variable so if our dependent variable appears only once in each term meaning nothing has a squared or has a power attached to it or multiplied to each other then this is called linear so an example of a nonlinear is if we will have something like yn multiplied to yn or if we have y, yn raised to some power three so overall it is linear why because the dependent variable appears only once in each term is it homogeneous or not well the right hand side which is the function of the independent variable f subscript n f of n in this case is equal to zero therefore it is homogeneous whenever your difference equation is homogeneous the answer you get is called a general solution or a complementary function. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this difference equation over here. So we're given that y sub n minus 4, y sub n minus 1 plus 4, y sub n minus 2 is equal to zero now i'm going to assume material solution y sub n equal to a lambda the power of n so if you're new to this if you're new to this video make sure you check the previous lesson on how to solve difference equations so for me to find y sub n minus one i have to replace the n in here with n minus one so for me to find y sub n minus one i'll have a lambda n minus 1 which is equal to a lambda n lambda negative 1 and for me to find y n minus 2 i must replace this n with n minus 2 so i'll have n minus 2 over here which reduces to a lambda n lambda negative 2 and i will take these terms and put them on y n y n minus 1 and y n minus 2 respectively in the given difference equation if I do that, I'm going to have a lambda n minus 4 a lambda n lambda minus 1 plus 4 a lambda n lambda minus 2. And this is equal to 0. Well, if you can check, I've got a common factor of a lambda n in all these terms. So terms are separated by a negative or an addition sign. So we've got three terms in here. Now, if I pull out a lambda n as a common factor, here I'm left with 1, here I'm left with 4, and the lambda minus 1, and here I'm left with 4, lambda to the power of negative 2. So, we said in the previous lesson that this must not be equal to 0, because this is what our general solution should look like. So, this must be non trivial. This means that this should definitely be equal to zero so one minus four lambda inverse plus four 
lambda inverse squared must be equal to zero. So if you want to know why this is the only one that is zero, so if I've got the letters A times B multiplied to give you zero, but A is not equal to zero, it means that B is the one that must be zero. So let's put this to the bottom since it has a negative sign. It's going to be 1 minus 4 over lambda plus 4 over lambda squared is equal to 0. I'll multiply all the terms by lambda squared. If I do that, I'm going to have lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4 is equal to 0. Well, let's factorize this. You should be able to factorize this, right? So if the sign is a positive, it means I'm going to have the same signs in the brackets either plus plus or minus minus the determining factor will be the sign on this one since it's a minus this means that my signs should be minus minus and i'm going to have a lambda here a lambda here two factors of four that when you add them they give you four when you multiply them they give you four again it's two and two because two plus two is four and two times two is four so i'll put two this side and two this side well lambda one is equal to two or lambda 2 is equal to 2. So we said our general solution or our trial solution took the form a lambda to the power of n. Since I've got two values of lambda, I'm going to extend this so that there are two terms in this. I remember we said our order is 2. So if our order is 2, we said our order is 2. We must have two terms. We must have two terms in the general solution. So for me to find my complementary solution, I must replace this with C. Then this over here is the form in which my complementary function will take. I can replace the value of lambda 1 and lambda 2. So yc is equal to a 2 to the power of n plus b 2 to the power of n. But these two terms here must not be the same, or it must not have the same form. Otherwise, if they're the same form, it means you can add them to give you something like this. So this is not the actual solution. So how can we make these two look different? I will take my independent variable n and multiply it to the second term. Therefore, I now have y complementary is equal to a multiplied by 2 to the power of n plus b multiplied by n then multiplied by 2 to the power of n now my two terms are distinct so this is how you can solve different equations where there are repeated roots you simply multiply the other term by n thank you for watching